Tired of having to awkwardly kneel down to put on your shoes, or worse yet, get down on one knee all disgruntled to do so? If it's not painful, it sure is annoying. So let's fix that. Let's make an entryway bench, and while we're at it, let's make it pretty. Plus I'll show you some tips along the way, and why I scrapped half the project and started over. If you've been woodworking for a bit, you already know this, but for the ones getting into nicer woods, one thing about buying nice lumber is that you can't always find the perfect board. You may find a nice piece, but then there's a pesky knot or imperfection in the middle, and you deem that portion unusable. So one thing I've learned over the years is to buy 20 to 30% more wood than you need, depending on what you like and see at the lumber yard. And yes, factor that into your quote. It's scary to think you'll have a higher quote, but What's more scary is not standing up for your self-worth. And remember this, in the end, quality is remembered long after price is forgotten. If you do have a nice piece and some knots on one side, I use that as the bottom and either fill them with epoxy or starbond. So when you joint and plane, it's pretty clear to see what gets taken off, but sometimes it's hard to see. I still like to have a visual uh, it gives me an idea how much I need to take off. As annoying as it is, I always change to my nicer blades when I make the final cuts. It's more work up front, but less time sanding the edges later. And don't be this guy over tightening the blade. Ugh. Oh. This blade is my 24 flat tooth rip blade by CMT Orange Tools. I really like this blade. And if you're interested, I have a link down below. I'm using dominoes to align the boards. This isn't necessary, but I do believe that they do add extra strength no matter what the word on the street is. I know I don't upload videos nearly as much as I'd like to. I'm learning how to juggle running my own woodworking business, spending time with my baby and family, as well as get more YouTube videos out there. However, I do try to keep my Instagram current, so if you're on there, come find me. Yeah, like I said in the other video, I suck at gluing. It would be nice to have my crosscut sled for repeatable cuts, but someone dropped it and broke it. <laughs> yeah. So I got these thick legs. Um, I want to thin them down and give it character. So I'm gonna taper these. However, I don't taper very much. And I made the most hideous tapering jig, but it works because I did two off camera. If I ever do more tapering, I need to make a way better jig. My problem was that I didn't use my clamps properly and my fingers were way too close to the blade. One thing I learned was that I should have done my dominoes before I tapered my legs. It was doable, but I had less clamping surface, which made for a little bit more work. Yes, this is ridiculous. I had to use my bigger domino because it had the cutting depths I needed. If I didn't, the holes in the legs would have crossed paths, which meant I would have had to cut my dominoes shorter. This seemed much easier. And I'll explain more in detail on the plans I have available down below, along with other joinery you can use as well. I clamped the pieces together so the edges are lined up. I clamped a square 
to this. I'm using the stop right here. I'm gonna use that as my reference. Then I'm going to square up this vertical holder to the square, then plunge. So I think the smartest thing to do is to sand this before I glue and assemble the base. That way, all I have to do is take care of any dings and most likely I'll get glue squeeze out that I have to clean up. So that will save me a headache. That way I don't have to work around the base. And normally I do chamfers and I probably do that beforehand, but this time I'm going to do something different. I want to keep the edges like they're still pretty sharp, but without the sharpness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a burr grinder. And what you do is you run it along and it breaks the edges. So yeah, just go lightly, but you can go hard if you like. But in this case, the harder you go, the more it'll look like a chamfer. And that's not what I'm looking for. Yeah, so this feels way better. No sharpness at all. You can run your hands on it hard and not get cut. So, if you want the look of a sharp edge, but not the feel of a sharp edge, use a burr grinder. Yeah. Even though it looks like I'm a pro doing this, I end up marking the legs for a certain orientation and still got it wrong. Oh, then I found $20. I don't know what you use, but I love using the paint scraper to knock off dry squeeze out that gets underneath the clamp. It's fast, it's easy. I mean, I guess you can use a grinder, but I'm not a grinder. Well, at least not anymore. So I just finished sanding the top and I just wanted to see what it looked like on top of the base. I'm actually pretty happy about it. I've never done just an all walnut bench, so I'm really excited. Well, actually, that's a lie. Anyway, I've actually done it before. I missed this one with my toothbrush, but if any of you have recommendations on what you do for a glue squeeze out, I'd love to hear from you. I feel like I'm lacking in this area. I'm actually in a little pickle right now because I decided mid-project I'm going to change the way I'm going to attach the bench top to the base. Last project I did with the top and a base, I ended up using these figure eight clips and honestly, I did not like these. So I went online and ordered these Z clips because I know here in Alaska, we have high humidity swings and right now it's super humid and wintertime it gets super dry. So I know we have a lot of wood movement. I always wanted to use these. However, the last time I built a table was a live edge table and I didn't need this kind of hardware. The only problem is that this base is already assembled and I got my domino to work. However, it's too long and it doesn't fit between this gap. And so I had to go borrow my friend's biscuit joiner and it works. However, when I attach my dust collector, it doesn't fit anymore. So I'm going to have to do this outside because this spits out a lot of dust. And honestly, from now on, I'll create my slots beforehand. Ew. 
much better. Yeah, so this is my first attempt at the bench top. So I picked the best pieces out of the walnut selection I had at the lumber store. But together, I just didn't like it so much. And honestly, I don't like the way the finish is. I don't know how, how it comes across the camera, but it's very gray. And walnut is so beautiful. It's dark, it's rich, it's voluptuous. So I decided to start over. So this time I went back to the lumber store and I picked out the two best that went together. And I did that at the lumber store as opposed to here at my shop. And I'll show you why I didn't like this one and why I like this one so much better and why I'll never do this way again when it comes to walnut. I put the first coat of water poly and honestly, <laughs> I don't like it. It doesn't pop. It's very flat, it's gray. Then I realized that I've never put water poly on walnut before. And I know water poly doesn't amber wood like the way oil does and lacquer. So I forgot that I had some sanding sealer. So I took a cut off of here and I applied it to this piece and it darkens really nicely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sand this first coat off, then I'm going to apply the sanding sealer over this. Then once that's dry and sanded, I'm going to spray the water poly because it'll keep the darkness of the walnut, but give the easeability and quickness of the water poly. Lesson learned, no more water poly on walnut. So the seal coat is all dry and since I spent so much time to get back to this point, so I'm actually going to lightly sand this and apply a second seal coat. Then I'm gonna apply my water poly over this. So yeah, I mean, it's already looking way better, but I'm thinking maybe a second coat will make it look more rich. So it won't hurt. It might make it look way better. So I think it'd be worth it. With the two seal coats on, I'm applying three coats of water poly sanding with 320 grit after the first coat and 400 grit after the second coat. And I'm totally loving the tones in this wood. So I'm happy to be almost done with this. So I actually went a little bit too heavy on this last coat, even though it feels okay. Um, however, when you run your hand over it, you can feel all the grains. And I just don't like it. It, it feels not, not good. And when I compare it to the base, which I didn't go heavy. It's so smooth, like I can't feel the grains at all. So unfortunately, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 400 grit sandpaper and just smooth it out, then do a light pass, maybe two light passes and see what happens. I have time before this needs to be delivered, so I'm going to experiment. So yeah. Ugh. Sanding it with 400 grit was definitely the right call. It's so much better now and baby smooth. So I put the last coat of finish on about four days ago and it's nice and dry and cure and it's pretty smooth, but to take it to another level, I like to take a really high grit sandpaper. Um, I just happen to have 3000 grit and you just wanna lightly hand rub over it because there are tiny, tiny, bumps or dust nibs on here. And so these will knock it off and make it ultra smooth. So I'm gonna do that to the top and the base. You won't need too much pressure and use your other hand to feel it. So I don't feel any more here, so that's good. But on this next piece, oh yeah, it's so much smoother. You should try it out. Yeah so much smoother. It doesn't leave any scratch marks at all. Yeah, so I highly recommend this. Now it's so smooth. And if you do feel anything, just lightly go over it again. But I'm gonna do this to the sides and underside and to the base. For the sides, don't go in all the way. Go about halfway. I made this project way harder on myself than I needed to. 
I was trying to force this bench together. If I would have spent more time game planning. Wait, what's that saying, Blair? As the woodworker, the artist, it's not my job to make the bench. It's my job to look at the wood, see the grains, and then pull the bench out from within the wood. 